Welcome back to The Vocalist. Today, we are listening to Hailstorm. You guys have been asking for this one for a while now. Even my sister told me last week I needed to react to Hailstorm, so that is what we are doing today. This is their official video of I Miss the Misery. Here we go. gosh okay this is a short one so i'm just gonna go all the way back to the beginning so many cool things the first thing that stands out to me all of the crazy colors that she has in her voice um yeah we're gonna we're gonna take it step by step here we go Sorry, this build is so exciting. And then to just come in on that scream, but it's got a bit of a fry, it's got a bit of a growl. Okay, so something that's very cool on this, whenever you are engaging your TA muscle, when you like want a little bit more like thickness in your chest voice if you use a glottal like onset at the beginning of a note like uh it helps create a little bit of added harshness and you can hear that in in these like these ahs that she's saying she's got that glottal onset um instead of saying ah uh, it's ah uh, it makes it really like punchy and powerful This is like almost like a slightly like 90s pop sound like it's very youthful um, She's using a lot of like fry a little bit more nasality here. Um, so this is color number one And then here, a little bit firmer adduction, like, oh, I'm gonna play those again because the contrast is just so beautiful. Can we talk about her diction? She, when she says awake, you can like really hear the aspiration in that K. All of that was just the most gorgeous mix. It was so strong and so powerful, but 
it had such clarity to it. Like, even though she's adding in these, like, kind of, like, growls and it's still, like, so, like, crisp and clear. I just, I know she's gonna sing it again, but we're gonna listen to it anyway. I just have to point this out again. When she's doing that, um, sort of that, what I described as like that sort of 90s pop, like um, it's got a lot of that fry, a little bit more of that whispery tone to it. Um, when she is moving from that into the, that slightly stronger, more powerful sound, it's in the same range. So it's not a difference of like registration. Like she's really implementing different colors, but in the same part of her voice. And I love seeing that in singers because it just, it, it speaks volumes to like their skill. supported like whenever she's going into that sort of second color like you can hear the slightly more open pharyngeal space like the larynx isn't depressed but it's it's a little bit lower than that brighter more youthful sound she was creating before and all of this in the place it is in her range like <laughs> It's she's so well supported from her abdomen. So she's not putting any tension or any strain on her cords or on her larynx. It's like all supported from below. And you can almost hear that sort of suspension of air um, as she like maneuvers, th ah, maneuvers through the line. Sorry, I'm just getting lost in my thoughts. We're going to go back before this. I don't know if it's a bridge that's coming up. I think I'm gonna have to listen to a live version after this. When she goes back and forth um, it to like that more like growly sound, let me. That's sort of like back, it's not in the background, but it feels like it's kind of like a background echoey sound. Let me back that up.
one okay we're gonna listen to the last section again her diction is so good like oh my gosh <laughs> I'm having a moment. Whenever I talk to singers about diction, it's very easy to sort of use your articulators to help influence sound. That's why a lot of coaches will talk about releasing tongue tension and jaw tension and just making sure everything is super neutral so that if you want to incorporate something different with your tongue, with your jaw, with your smile, you know, scrunching your face, all these different things that affect our sound, you can, but you don't rely on it. And when you don't rely on it, like she is this, uh, I can't talk. She's a perfect example of that because her diction is so crystal clear. I understand every single word she's saying and she's not, um, she's not like changing the words to fit um, any sort of placement or the shape that she needs to create a sound. Like, Everything's just so neutral that she can, like, speak, sing, scream these words however she wants because it doesn't affect her tone. And I love that. So hard kick in the face okay not only are you doing like these aspirate K's with your tongue high in the back of your mouth K and then face like you have to push so much air through that F sound in order for people to like for it to not come out like bass or vase or something else you know and so she again so well supported in order to like add all of this extra air into these consonants but it sounds so good love that at the end like whenever she has that growl sound I love how she just kind of chooses like these really exciting moments to incorporate it as opposed to I mean I'm sure it would be super cool if it was throughout the entire song but I like what I like the artistic choice she made in only using them that sound in selective parts I feel like there was one more thing I wanted to say oh that, that long growl note again. I want to listen to that because I'm also so impressed how how long she sustained that without changing the color, without changing the timbre of her voice. Like, ugh, so good. Ah, that was it. Okay. Oh, that was so good. The song, I love that I understood every single word she sang because it made it that much more impactful. Like, I just, I love the song. Um, I love so much of what I just saw, but it really is her tone, her voice that just struck me the most. And just the number of colors she has, the way she incorporates them, and with such beautiful intensity and, like, support, I just... Oh, it was really good. It was really good. Um, that's it for today. I talked a lot during that reaction, but thank you guys so much for this recommendation. Thank you for watching with me and hopefully I will see you next time.